Hi, and welcome back to Lisa's Stamp Studio. The card we're going to be creating together today is quite different. It uses a piece of acetate as the base of the card. And instead of adding the designer paper and the cardstock to the front of that, we're actually going to add it to the inside of the card base, but it's going to show through the front. Here is a quick look at the card we're going to be creating, and I've got lots of tips to share with you, as well as an alternative using different products. If this is your first time visiting my YouTube channel, I would love to have you subscribe. Click the subscribe button below and next to it, that small bell icon. If you click that, you'll receive notifications when I'm live right here on YouTube, as well as when I share a new video. Let's head over to the stamp table and let's get started on today's card. I have my Simply Scored scoring tool right here, and this is the easiest way for you to score a window sheet, better known as a piece of acetate. We are going to score this in half. It does measure four and a quarter by 11. The scoring tool does come with a stylus tool as well, and it is dual ended. So one side is a little thicker than the other. I'm going to use the thicker side for today's project. So you're going to see that the measurements are here. The scoreboard does come with three place markers, so you're able to mark your spots for scoring, which is especially helpful if you're doing repeated projects. The halfway point is at five and a half inches, and then we're going to score right down that track. Now, because this is a very thick piece of acetate, you can score down several times to make it easier for you to fold. Now, I know that's going to be near impossible to see here in the video because it's clear and shiny and very reflective. But I'm going to go ahead and find that center, measuring up the outside edges. And then I'm going to lay it down on my work surface. And I'm grabbing my bone folder. And I'm going to go over that crease that we just made on the scoreboard. You're going to want to crease well. And I do recommend that you crease from both sides. Let's set this aside and let's go ahead and work on the images for our card. I have several pieces of scrap white cardstock here. I do recommend that you give yourself ample room between the different images we're going to stamp because there are separate dies for them and you can die cut them all at once. Let's start with our bird image. I stamped it in basic gray ink and that image comes from the stamp set called Birds and Branches. And you're gonna see there's numerous images in here of the birds. The best thing about this stamp set is it has coordinating dies. Now there are some missing from my sheet because I've pulled them out because we're gonna use them today but I love that it includes borders as well as this beautiful floral ring for your birds. You can purchase this as a bundle, which will save you 10%, or of course you can purchase them individually. I've chosen this bird image here, and we're gonna go ahead and ink that up, and we're gonna stamp that here. I'm going to switch over now to So Saffron ink, and this is the color I chose for the eggs. I'll go ahead and ink those up, and I'm gonna leave room between my bird image, and I'll stamp those here. I'm going to switch over now to a different piece of paper, and this is the nest image. We're going to create some variegated color here, and we're going to use two different ink pads. We're going to use crumb cake as well as early espresso. I'm going to have those open side by side so they're ready to go. And I also have a sponge dauber here. I absolutely love these because there's a hole in the back for you to put your finger in, which gives you a lot of control when you're creating coverage on your stamps or your cardstock. You're gonna stamp the image in the lightest shade first, which is the crumb cake. I'm gonna leave that face up on my work surface, and I'm gonna add a little bit of ink from the ink pad to the dauber, and we are gonna randomly add that darker color here to the stamp, and then we're gonna stamp that right here. No two of these are ever gonna look alike. And then you're gonna see that we've got some beautiful variegated tones of the browns here for a more realistic look. Now, while we have the basic gray ink pad out, I've cut myself a very small piece of So Saffron cardstock, and this is going to house the greeting for the outside of my card, which I chose Birthday Wishes. This comes from the Itty Bitty Birthdays stamp set. Lots and lots of greetings appropriate for all different ages, both for the outside and the inside of your cards. We'll go ahead and ink that up, and we're going to stamp that right here in the center. I'm going to move that greeting off to the side, and I've cut a piece of Whisper White cardstock here. This is going to be for the inside of the card, and I've pulled out a greeting from a different stamp set for the inside, and this set is called Best Year. You're going to see that there's also greetings for thank you, for Christmas, as well as other occasions. I'm going to ink that up, and we'll stamp that here near the top. I also have a piece of pear pizzazz cardstock, and from the dies, I've pulled out this beautiful vine image here for the tree. And as I mentioned to you, there were dies for each one of these images. I'm gonna go ahead and ready this to take it over to my die cutting machine. So I have my clear platform here. 
Now, I love to use low-tack tape even post-it notes or post-it note flags to line up the die. Since I'm going to be using a lot of dies at one time, I want to make sure that these are well secured here to the cardstock and the die so they don't shift while I'm die cutting them. So I'm going to do the same here for the bird and for the eggs. I'll secure those with tape as well. And there's plenty of room here for me to add my branch. And now we'll go ahead and cover this with our other clear mat and run it through the die cutting machine. We have our leaves, our nest, our eggs, and we have our bird. Now I did decide I wanted to add a little bit of color to the wings and to the belly. And I decided to use the Stampin' Blends markers to do that. This is the combination of Seaside Spray. And I like to use the lightest color first. That's just a personal preference. I'm gonna add color here to the wing and to the belly. I do recommend that you give this a few seconds for the alcohol base of this marker to evaporate. And then what you can do is come in with your darker shade. So I'm gonna add a little color here near the top and along the bottom of these feathers and along here underneath the stomach. Now the magic of the Stampin' Blends markers comes in with going back to the lightest color and then blending these two lines together so that you'll have more of a shaded look than a clear definition of where one starts and one stops. So I'm gonna pull from the dark to the light and bring those colors together. Now that we have our pieces all done, we are ready to put our card together. I've cut a piece of designer series paper. This measures three and three quarters of an inch by 10, and I did score it in half right before you joined me. This is from the designer series paper called In Good Taste, and there's some beautiful rustic patterns in here. Like most of the Stampin' Up! designer series papers, they are double-sided, which is going to work beautifully for this clear acetate card. This is the card base that we had previously scored. And because I know it's gonna be difficult to see that clear acetate, I'm gonna use my silicone craft sheet underneath, hoping that's gonna make it a little bit more visible for you. Now, intuitively, you would normally wanna add this to the outside, but I made this a full sheet on purpose so that it could go to the inside of the card. Make sure you hang with me to the end of the video because I have another sample to share with you as well that uses a different method on this clear card base. All I'm going to do now is I'm going to adhere this designer series paper to the inside of the card. The easiest way to do it and the least obtrusive way is to use glue dots. So I'm gonna pull back one glue dot at a time and on the back side and the top of each corner, I am going to press the glue dot onto the designer paper I have all four glue dots now here. And then what we're gonna do is put this on the inside of the card base. Now you are gonna have to open it up. I'm going to gravitate this to the center. Now, once those glue dots are down, you cannot reposition them. So just be very careful that you have it centered the best that you can, and then tack that in place. This piece then is going to be mobile on the front of the card. And we'll come back and secure this when we're all finished. I am gonna go back over this with my bone folder again because I want this to lay as flat as possible while I go ahead and decorate the front. Let's start with the branch. What I decided to do was to place a bulk of the branch on the top and put this other portion underneath. You're going to want to hold it over the center of the card base. You may have to trim some of this away, but we will eventually put the greeting there. So if you need to cut this off, you can. I'm gonna wait to see if I need to do so. Once I have this positioned where I want it, I am going to flip this over. And to secure these few pieces, I'm going to add dimensionals because that's what's gonna eventually hold this down to the card base. So I only have a few areas here that I need to tack down. Over here on the front, what we can do is we can add a couple glue dots in inconspicuous places. And let me show you how you can do that very easily. You're gonna take your take your pick tool and I've got my paper piercing tool attachment. We're gonna go back to our glue dots here and I'm actually going to pick up one of those glue dots with my tool. And it doesn't matter that you distort the image. You want it actually a little bit smaller because what we're gonna do is we're gonna work behind the solid die area and we're gonna tack that down in place. This is just going to secure areas of the branch so that it doesn't break as it comes in and out of the envelope. And I'll do one other here on this side. And this time I'm gonna choose an area down here near the bottom where I know it'll be secured to that nest. Next are going to be the eggs. And since they're very, very small, I love to use the putty tip on my take your pick tool to help me pick those up. I do recommend that you lay them out to get an idea of the positioning before you start to adhere them. Once again, we're going to use glue dots. I'm gonna use the egg closest to the right. This time you need to put the glue dot in the lower front portion of the egg because it's going to stick behind here. 
gone ahead and I've placed that here and I'm carefully removing it. And I'm gonna pick up my nest and I'm gonna position this egg where I want it. Now I'm gonna do the exact same thing with these other eggs and I'm just gonna shift their positioning a little bit more so that they're not all facing in the same direction so it looks a little bit more natural. Now that my eggs are in the nest, let's go ahead and add our bird. We're gonna add a glue dot right down here near the bottom of the belly, just like we've done with the eggs. I like to press my image right on top of that glue dot so that I don't have to manhandle that. And I'm gonna point my bird down so that it's looking at the egg. Now we're ready to add this to the front of the acetate clear card. To do so, you're gonna flip this over and you're gonna use your dimensionals. Now you are gonna to want to use these abundantly to make sure you've got good balance to this. I'm also gonna anchor them over the back half of these eggs to help secure them. Now these areas down here are also gonna to need to stick to the card base as well. And for this, I love to use my mini dimensionals. While they're right here on the paper backing, go ahead and take your scissors and cut them in half to make them smaller. That's gonna allow them to fit these small areas really, really well. And again, I'm gonna use my take your pick tool to help me lift those up. And I'm gonna place one down here. I'll take another and I'll place it over here off to the side. You do wanna make sure that it's not gonna show from the front. And let's add another over here. Once the dimensionals are in place, you can go ahead and use that same tool to remove those paper backings. We have the front of our card base here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to center this image. Now, before you stick it down, I want you just to hover over it to make sure that your stems are going to fit within the circumference of the card. If they don't, then you can go ahead and cut them off now, which is what I did in my original sample. So I'm centering this the best that I can, and then I'll tack that in place. Our next step is the greeting, and we're gonna flip this over as well, and we're gonna use two dimensionals, one on each side. Because they're a wonderful hexagon shape, it's gonna be very, very easy for you to align that straight edge to the straight edge of the cardstock. And then this now is going to get centered over here on the far right side of the branch. Now, if you choose to go all the way to the edge of the clear acetate or the window sheet, you may, or you can come to the edge of the designer series paper. So that you can just see an alternative, I'll go this time all the way to the edge. Not only that, it's going to secure that branch in place. If we open up the card, you're gonna see that these are two independent pieces. You are not going to want to attach this piece to this piece until your image is on the front first, because this is where we're gonna strategically place some glue dots to adhere it to the designer series paper. I'm gonna open up my acetate once again, and I've got my glue dots here, and I'm gonna use that take your pick tool. Now you don't have to place the glue dots everywhere. You're just going to place them in a few places, enough to hold this down to secure it. Glue dots are very, very strong. As long as they're separated well here on the card base, they'll stick. Once you have those positioned, just go ahead and close up the card base and tack it to the designer series paper. When you open the card now, you'll see that the designer series paper now is adhered to the inside front of your card. I do use my bone folder again and reinforce that score line. Don't be afraid to do that over and over. Our last step now is going to be using the cardstock that we stamped the sentiment on for the inside of the card. I'll be using my silicone craft sheet and my Stampin' Seal Plus, and I'll add adhesive to my four corners. The silicone craft sheet is wonderful since adhesive, liquid glue, and hot glue will not stick to it. You're going to center this to the inside of the designer series paper, and then when you're happy with the placement, just go ahead and tack that down. You can see that the acetate is not camouflaged by the designer series paper. Our die cut image is on the top. Now I promised you one other, but before I show you that, I wanna show you the original card that I made. The only difference here is that I took the greeting here to the edge of the designer series paper, where here I took it all the way to the edge of the acetate. This sample uses the Forever Fern stamp set. I also use the greeting from there and these beautiful gold laser cut designer series paper are from the same suite of products. And on the inside of this one, you're gonna see that it's mostly clear behind here. So I added my greeting in a smaller area behind the top panel so that it wasn't visible from the front. Unlike this card, these layers are actually attached to the front of the window sheet where this is attached to the inside. So there are a bunch of different ways you can create this card, all of them beautiful in their variation. 
If you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and you are interested in receiving a copy of the current catalogs, head over to lisasstampstudio.com, click on Catalogs, and you can request one there. If you have enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up here on YouTube, which is a like. It certainly helps, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great day. 